Hello everyone and welcome to another session of Bugs of the Month. This time we are going to be looking at a brain autopsy from the archives and it belongs to a 23 year old female patient and uh, we are told that she was being managed with steroids for systemic lupus erythematosus for the past three years. Then she develops neurological symptoms and uh, due to neurological deterioration, she is referred to our hospital. Computed tomography of the brain uh, reveals multiple contrast enhancing lesions, but the patient is lost soon afterwards and a brain autopsy is performed. And we are going to be looking at the sections from the brain autopsy. As you can see, this is the pile matter. You can see the cortex over here, the brain gray tissue. But as we move deep down into the white matter, we start seeing areas of tissue disintegration or rarefication, we might say. I'm going to continue moving. You can also see perivascular inflammation, and as I said, areas of tissue rarefication and disintegration. These are actually areas where you can see a lot of macrophages, probably microglial cells. There is tissue necrosis here. You can also see necrotic debris in between. And then you've got a lot of macrophages. You've got these perivascular microglial nodules composed of monocytes mostly and probably microglia again over here inflammatory tissue and then occasionally you start noticing these granular balls just a second and does raise a suspicion of microorganisms you know one is concerned whether they're might be microorganisms inside those granules, whether they might maybe be macrophages, but in fact they're not, apparently. When you move on, there's an area of more prominent inflammation here. And then at the periphery, you, these balls, again, which I'll tell you are actually encapsulated Bradozoites, bradozoites, kistic kists, encysted bradozoites of Toxoplasma gondii. See, these are the microglial nodules, per perivascular microglial nodules, and you've got astrogliosis here, and you've got these encysted bradozoites. I'm going to show you the immunohistochemistry in a minute, which is going to prove to us that these actually are uh, Toxoplasma. Gondi. So these are actually parasites, kystics, bradozoites within the brain tissue. I'll zoom out a bit. This is a bit the peripheral area, too much, the peripheral area of where gliosis is more prominent and necrosis, there's not much necrosis over here. And this area, this peripheral area, is where you see most of these uh, brandozoid kists. They're also supposed to be free tachyzoids, but especially in areas of necrosis, but those are very difficult to identify. You can also see menin an area of meningitis, subpeal inflammation here. And again, you can see these kists right underneath this area of subpile uh, inflammation and in fact maybe necrosis over here you can see that there is prominent inflammation proliferation of the vasculature here small foci of necroti necrosis and necrobiosis biotic Debri here, right underneath the uh, pia matter, so a subpile necrosis, and the encysted bradozoites.
Here they are. In a minute, I am going to zoom in even further. But first, let me show you the immune histochemistry. At low power, you can again appreciate that at the periphery, you've got these and kisted huh, bradyzoids, that's, that's better. And at areas of necrosis, you've also got the free tachyzoids. The smaller dot-like staining amongst the inflammatory cells, you've got these tachyzoids, smaller dots, as well as these uh, encysted bradyzoids. So we can take a closer look at these kisses. There they are. Kissed, filled with bradyzoids. Par the Toxoplasma gondii parasite. Here's another one. And this was it uh, for this month. I hope you enjoyed this case. Bye bye.